This is Rodney Peterson's Pennsylvania Railroad. I'm going to do this sort of uh, geographically, uh, moving around a little bit to, to try to add some context to it. Um, so we're going to start sort of on the fringes of the railroad um, down in Louisville. Um, this is a photograph taken in March of 52 uh, of the South Wind. And given what I can find about the schedule, I think this is uh, probably the southbound, which um, arrived in Louisville about four o'clock in the afternoon. And this was a Chicago to uh, Miami train that uh, was a joint operation with the PR, uh, the Louisville and National um, ACL and uh, FEC. Um, here are a couple of uh, F units sitting in the yard uh, in, uh, in Louisville. Roddy did uh, get some steam uh, photographs. This is uh, also in Louisville in April of 52, a PRR 2104. And here's another one in August of uh, 1957. So we're going to move uh, east. Um, this is uh, a passenger shark in Bayhead, New Jersey. And uh, these units were designed, uh, at least the shell, by Raymond Lowy um, and were used on first class passenger trains, including a Broadway Limited. But uh, they had problems, as, as a lot of the earlier. Baldwin products did, and they're soon relegated to lower class trains. So this is at uh, Bayhood, where it was uh, serving out its last days on commuter service in the uh, New York and Long Branch. And at one point, apparently, these were uh, even relegated to freight service, I have found. This is in uh, Philadelphia, a GE 44 tonner. I think this is uh, the Ben Franklin Bridge in the background. Any of you from Philadelphia may confirm or refute that if you feel comfortable. Yeah, that looks like the uh, Ben Franklin Bridge. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, is this track still uh, in use? Uh, I, I looked on Google Maps and it looks like there may be a median strip here, but it doesn't look like there's much traffic that could be going on that. Uh, there, there is point. trackage used in the, in the Philly area yeah. like that, but not, not that close to, to downtown. It's like around South Philly, like around the Walt Whitman Bridge around the stadiums. Right. That, that trackage was used by the Penn's Landing trolley yeah. years later. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, now we're in South Philadelphia, and we have a pair of Baldwin uh, BLW RT624s. Um, they were built between uh, 51 and 54. Uh, Baldwin uh, sent one of them to the Minneapolis, Northfield, and Southern, and the PRR took the other 23. They were used as uh, heavy switchers, uh, pushers on ore trains, and as transfer power in uh, Philadelphia, and also in Mingo Junction. We'll see some of those later. Um, and apparently none of these are, uh, are in museums. Now we're in Edgemore, Delaware, and I thought this was Rodney's slide, but um, it's uh, in uh, William Volkmer's uh, Pensy Electric Years book with his, uh, his name on it, so it's got to be Bill Volkmer's slide, and I know Rodney traded with a lot of folks. Uh, so this is an E3B and there were two of these that were experimental locomotives built by Westinghouse. Um, notice the rather unusual BBB uh, running gear. And these ran off of course AC catenary powder, power and had the DC traction motors. And according to Bill Volkmer's book, which was pretty interesting, they were water cooled and it proved to be a, a plumber's nightmare, uh, especially as he said, when water leaked out and was replaced without antifreeze by a friendly fire department. So this time of the year, you can see what could happen there. 
they were scrapped in 1964. Um, look back towards the end of the train. I don't know if my pointer works here. Uh, according to Bill, this is a manure from the Delaware racetracks. It was going up to Philly and then it would be sent out to Kennett Square where you may know there is a big mushroom farming uh, uh, facility uh, or facilities. Uh, this no longer travels by train, I'm told. Jim, your volume seems just a tad low, so I don't know if you should... Okay, well, let's see. Now I can get closer to the mic, or uh, let me turn... That looks promising. Okay, How's, does that work? Is that a little louder? Good for me, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Thanks. Good, yeah. Bill, can I suggest you try and kill some of the icons there on the right side of the screen? Um, actually, I think I can't do that on your screen. Yeah screen oh uh, well let's see is that unique to my screen or is that's unique seen? to your screen yeah, yeah. uh-huh so if you uh at, at the top of the icons you should see like a, a a single line a bar two bars whatever if you click on the single line on the left it'll minimize it you know and you can also drag them off to the side of the screen yeah. if you want mm -hmm. carl okay i just killed them thank you so much i thought maybe that was a glo global problem good question carl thank you all right well, now we're in Alexandria, home territory for the Washington and Potomac chapter members. This is a, a P5A. Um, 92 of these were built by, by and for the Pensy. I think the first two were built in Altoona. And then they split the other 90 between uh, Westinghouse, which contracted the construction to uh, Baldwin. And GE did the other uh, 45. And these were uh, relegated to freight duty for the most part. Another familiar site, I'm sure, to you folks in DC, MP54 coaches. This probably is just north of the throat of uh, Washington Union Station. Um, I used to see these down at Orangeville in Baltimore where they would lay over between runs, which was one of the first places that I uh, went to uh, photograph in the Baltimore area. Hey, Jim, uh, that last slide, the one before the one you just described, was that a, a duplex <laughs> steam, uh, by any, do you know, this one? in the background? Oh, I have no idea what's in the background. Okay. No idea. All right, here we are again, north of uh, Washington Union Station. Uh, with uh, GG1, um, PR had 139 of these. Um, I learned something, does anybody, uh, and I guess if you're a Pensy guru, you know this, how it got the name GG1? Apparently, um, you, you look at the undercarriage, it's a 460 oh, and another 460 oh, back to back. And in the white classification in steam locomotives for the Pensy, that was a G class. And so you put two 460s together on an electric locomotive and it became a GG1. Um, and I always thought that Raymond Lowy designed this. Actually, uh, the first designer was a guy named Donald Roscoe Donner. And then Lowy got involved to enhance the aesthetics and he recommended the uh, the welded body instead of the rivets and added the five uh, pinstripes. Um, hey, hey, Jim. Yeah. Uh, you might want to rethink that date. I wish it was true. Oh, September. No, no it's not. Okay. Well, that's what happens when you uh, go through and try to put 160 slides and <laughs> let me see if I got the date. It's probably 1966. I wish it was true. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe Bennett Levin's been at work and we didn't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be, that's got to be 66. That's got to be 66. Okay, you caught me on that one. That was a, that was, that was a plant, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, during the Amtrak, uh, you know, these were run and uh, as passenger service faded on the, on the Pensy, some of these were re-geared for freight. Okay, here's the right date, okay? <laughs> Um, here, here's a good spot to interject a little story. When I was 
wet behind the ears Ralph Anning. And I first moved to Baltimore in, I guess, 72. We started photographing in the mid to late 70s. I went to Ivy City because I passed by going to D.C. to see stuff with the kids. And I thought, this is a great place to photograph. And uh, so I got my camera and I walked over and I started taking pictures. And I started walking down the tracks. And I walked all the way to Union Station along the railroad. Got some great shots. And then, of course, uh, once I got on the platform I, you know, and went into the station, I wasn't getting out. And so I had to walk back across uh, by New York Avenue. I think that was a more dangerous walk than walking along the railroad tracks. Uh, um, now we're in Baltimore. This is one of the uh, PRR uh, tractors uh, that was used to haul trains uh, through Baltimore. And this was used on the Bond Street uh, line. Uh, in um, in Fells Point, and if you look at Google, if you look at Google Earth, you can still see remnants of the of the track uh, that was used then. All right, so now we're we're up at Perryville, and I love this photo. This is just a great photo, isn't it? Uh, probably taken from the platform right in front of Perry Tower. Uh, the tower operator is uh, hooked up orders to uh, train that's uh, leaving the Northeast Corridor. And you can see the Y over there on the right, so we'll be heading up the, uh, heading up the Port Road. Um, and here's the next in the sequence. And of course, this is, a, this is also a P5, but it's got a center cab. Um, apparently there was a grade crossing accident um, and a couple of crew members were killed. Um, and so uh, the final 28 locomotives were built to this design with the, with the center cab. All right, so we're gonna get a couple more shots in then we'll head up to Port Road. Here's some more GG1s. Hope you're not tired of those because we'll see a few more. This is on a southbound uh, train on the corridor. Um, again, from the platform right in front of Perry Tower. And another GG1. Now I'll head up to Columbia um, and we get shots of the E44s. Um, these were built by General Electric between 1960 and 1963. And according to Volkmer, they were uh, Pensy's only truly successful electric freight locomotive. They were used on the corridor, of course, and uh, the electrified freight routes out of Enola Yard. Uh, they were retired in the mid 80s and one is preserved at the Railroad Museum, Pennsylvania. There's a couple more in the same location. Um, I think this is right north of Cola Tower and there's a southbound of uh, my memory serves me correctly from the times I've been up there. Here's a GG1 and a caboose hop at Columbia. A little further north uh, at the Marietta, and now I'm with uh, the Enola branch, and here's a P5A with a center cab with at least two P5As, the box cabs behind it. And, um, you know, I, I need to look at some of my pictures from Maria because I think some of those buildings back there are still there and look pretty much the same. Uh, Bill, you might uh, recognize them because I know you've been up there. So the line uh, that heads up to Nola crosses over Shocks Mill Bridge and we're over on the east side of the Susquehanna now and this is an ore drag at Cly. Um, and those tracks to the right are the former Northern Central going down to York. And then they, of course, eventually went to Baltimore. And now are, at least some of them are the light rail line north of Baltimore. A little further north at Goldsboro with uh, another E44. This looks like it's been through the wash rack. And those look like refrigerator cars. Uh, and you can see the, the hatches are open, the icing hatches are open. Now we're 
Also at Goldsboro, and here we have a pair of uh, P5As. I notice a lot of these shots, the uh, engineers are waving. That uh, was pretty common back in those days. I think less so nowadays. That's nice to see. Now this, I don't know, maybe somebody can chime in here. Um, I don't know why um, this would be a helper uh, in this part of the railroad where the caboose is uh, right next to the engine. And if you look at the pantograph, which usually is up on the trailing uh, edge of the locomotive, I'm, I'm guessing uh, that the caboose was just tucked in behind the engine. Maybe this was a local doing some switching. Um, Now we've got a GG1 also at Goldsboro. <coughs> and a pair of them at Goldsboro. Here is uh, that E3B again as a single unit on, uh, on a freight. Here's a trio of uh, GP9s, and we're going to see a lot of these. Pennsylvania Railroad had 270 of these, and uh, they arrived starting in 1955. Um, and they were preferred power early on, uh, even the high priority TV trains, and you'll see a number of shots of them on those trains. All right, now we're in a Nola yard. And I, I can't count how many locomotives are lined up here, but the uh, lead one is an E44. I think somebody's got a TV on in the background if you want to check your microphone, guys. Uh, here's a P5A at Enola. And this is one of the cleaner ones I've seen in the Rodney slides. Here's old rivets, um, and you can clearly see the rivets. Um, this was the first GG1. Um, and this now resides in the um, Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. And here's an SD9, which uh, riding labels on the slide as the Enola hump switcher. A little further east is, uh, this now we're on the, the, the main line to Philadelphia. This is an E44, an eastbound TV train right there at Lemon Place where Strasburg connects. All right, well, head up the Buffalo line and this is a nice sequence here. This is at Newberry Junction, which is just west of uh, Williamsport. Um, this is a 210O, affectionately known as a hippo, um, on a train uh, with some smoke. The rear uh, heralding two, uh, two helpers shoving on the caboose. I think we got somebody hanging out the window or the cupola. Uh, this is at Brookville, PA. And uh, three RS3s, and Rodney says this is an NRH special on October 10th of 1960. And I found a picture in one of uh, um, the Pensy Diesel Years, in one of Giannis's books, almost exactly the same. The guy must have been standing, standing a few feet for Rodney. Um, this is a Kiski Junction. So it was apparently a fan trip, I'm assuming out of uh, out of Pittsburgh. So our first look at uh, some sharks. This is an Oil City PA. Um, and uh, this, that, this line was uh, connected the Conomo line to Buffalo. I don't think the PRR part of this is in existence anymore. I know the uh, Western New York and PA, the former Erie branch from Meadville goes to Oil City. Um, these are the 1600 horsepower sharks. There were also uh, earlier versions that were 1500. Um, 
PR was the largest single owner and they rostered 72 A units and 31 B units. Uh, they were retired in 67. Um, one of the things I noticed looking at the pictures was when you saw these sharks, they were never immune with anything. Um, and I found out why. And they used an air-powered throttle. And uh, E&Ds and Elcos uh, did not. They used apparently an electric-powered throttle. And so they could not MU until they made some modifications very late in their lifespan. All right, now we're going to go down to uh, the middle division, as it was called then, which is now the Pittsburgh line. Uh, this is a place some of you may have photographed. This is at Duncannon, Pennsylvania, uh, an eastbound uh, with uh, two E8s. Uh, the tower is still standing. Um, now looking the other way, and I think they're both M1s. I know the first one is because I could confirm the number. I have not seen an explanation for why we would have them back to back, but I guess you know, if that's the way the engine's aligned in an only and you need to, you send it out that way. Jim? Yes. That view tower was wiped out by a coal train years ago. Yeah. I, I don't know if the tower operator was killed. I think he yeah. made it out in time, yeah. Yeah. but I think it was in the late Penn Central days when, yeah. or maybe early Conrail, yeah. Yeah. but uh, a coal train derailed there and wiped the whole tower right off the base. Uh, Jim, you don't see that practice much in, in the United States, but I've seen yeah. videos in other countries and yeah. photographs, and they yeah. they run back to back like that yeah. sometimes, so that if you need to go back the other way and there's yeah. there's nowhere to turn, one engine faces forward either way. I just thought it was interesting, not something, you, not something I'm used to seeing. All right, we are in Barrie, Pennsylvania, and... Barry is uh, about halfway between uh, Huntington and, uh, and Tyrone. Um, and these are uh, FM Erie builds. Uh, PR had uh, 36A units and 12B units that they bought uh, between 47 and 48. And they were FM units and they acquired the name Erie units because FM had limited construction capacity at their plant in Beloit, Wisconsin. So they subcontracted the assembly out to uh, GE, which uh, did it at their facility in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, these uh, were initially freight units, 2,000 horsepower each. Um, when the centipedes started acting up, um, they were converted, re-geared and converted to passenger units for a couple of years and then um, went back to freight units when the E units, the E7s and the E8s started arriving. Um, they were scrapped in 1963. As, as I'm looking through the pictures and looking at Yannick's books, it, you know, it sort of appears that the Pennsylvania bought just about anything um, and gave it a try and then settled on what was uh, what was the most efficient in the E units turned out to be uh, the power they used almost exclusively on passenger trains once they once they figured it out and the uh, the uh, Erie Bills and the passenger sharks and the PAs uh, <coughs> all soon went by the wayside and here are the famous or infamous uh, centipedes. Um, they had, PR had two dozen of these built between 47 and 48. And within five years, uh, they were sent to Altoona for revision. They were initially uh, BP60s, meaning Baldwin passenger, 6,000 horsepower for the two units. Uh, they were downrated to uh, 5,000 horsepower, reclassified as B. H50s, meaning Baldwin helpers, and uh, swapped their five stripes for a single stripe, and uh, were sentenced, as Giannis, he said, to pusher duties on the east slope of the Alleghenies, but they apparently occasionally ran on 
interdivisional traits between Altoona and Enola. And I think that's what we're seeing here in Bellwood, a place I wasn't familiar with, but is a little bit uh, east of uh, Altoona um, on the Pittsburgh line, or it was then the, the middle division. So in one day in August of 63, Rodney spent some time on the Horseshoe Curve and got quite a treat. So we'll go through that. We got a trio of uh, GP30s. Um, Pensy had 54 of these uh, starting in February 63. Uh, they again tried uh, competing units. The U25Bs were uh, slightly greater horsepower and had some of those. Um, and one of the Alcos, I think a DL670 maybe. Um, but they settled, uh, at least they bought more of the, the G30s and, and that seemed to be their preferred uh, power. Uh, in this horsepower class. So here we have a couple of GP9s on a westbound uh, on the curve or approaching the curve. Here we got a couple of RSD70s assisting train number 25. Um, it was the Duquesne, which was the New York City to Pittsburgh train, which was due out of Altoona at uh, two in the afternoon. Um, these RSD7s, I think they had six or seven of those, maybe eight, and eight were based out of uh, Crescent, and we'll see them a little later. And now we got an FA2 with two uh, FB2s, uh, also westbound on the curve. A little later the same day, we got a 1A and 3B units on another westbound. Now we're in Crescent, and here's a set of uh, shark units. The center one is um, a DR44-1500, which is a long way to say a 1500 horsepower shark unit, uh, which was one of the earlier versions. Two A's, and you can see the caboose that it's attached to, presumably giving it a shove. And I don't know, I can't tell, some of you may be more familiar, it, it, is this a train that went over and came down to Crescent and is now going to unhook the helpers and that train's going west or is just getting ready to shove up the hill? I, I don't know enough about the layout of Crescent to offer an opinion here. And here... I mean, it's got to be westbound. Yeah. Okay. Because you wouldn't shove up the hill. The hill... The crest of the hill is only about three miles from there, so. Uh, yeah, but would they have started down at South Fork? I mean, you know, I, I just don't know. I, I, okay. I guess if you look at old pictures, you could figure out from that little platform w w where it was. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. So here are a couple of RSD7s at Crescent, and they must be brand new because it looks like the brass is, you know, crawling all over and checking them out. Um, uh, Now, I found this a fascinating photo. This is at Summerhill. I don't know how many of you have been to Summerhill to photograph, but you probably haven't been here. Um, this is a little east of town. Uh, this is Tunnel Street, which parallels the Connemore River, and there's a Stone Arch Viaduct. And again, if you look at Google Earth, I mean, this is just a tree tunnel now. You might be able to see one unit as the road goes under it, but it was, of course, wide open back then. Um, these are all uh, 1,500 horsepower shark units. And Bill and I are surmising that that is Rodney's car. And Bill did a little research. And I think you came up with it. It's a 1958 Sunbeam Rapier Sports Saloon car. Is that right, Bill? All right, we're going to move. Uh, we're going to move further west, and this is an area I'm not familiar with. So that was thought, that was correct, Jim. Okay, good, good. I I found the automobiles in these pictures almost as fascinating as the locomotives, and we're going to see a few more as we go on. So this is this is the the main line into into uh, 
Pittsburgh right here. And these highlighted spots are areas where Rodney took some pictures, Manor, Irwin, Ardera, Trafford, Pitcairn. Um, this is the Monongahela River. This is the line down to Brownsville here. Um, so we'll move into Pittsburgh. Uh, this is at Manor. Uh, the lead unit here is a Fairbanks Morris Sea Liner. And uh, these were uh, eight feet shorter than the Erie built. Um, even though they had the same prime mover and steam generator. And uh, the PR had 18 A units and eight B units. They were, uh, they were built in a passenger configuration with a steam generator, but I don't believe that Pensy had any of those. Also at Manor, you know, we've got uh, a passenger train with a lot of head end traffic. Uh, which is something you notice on a lot of the passenger views that Roddy's got. E, uh, E7A, E7B, and an E8 A unit on the rear. I believe this is a westbound. Uh, a little further west, we're at Irwin, PA, and here we have uh, five GP9s uh, leading a, a TV train. And now we have a trio of F units, an F7, an F3, and an FA. Uh, looks like a solid gun train, also at Irwin. The Aero train. Um, this is at Ardura. Um, two of these were introduced by EMD in 1955. Uh, the prime mover was uh, the same as they used in their SW1200 switcher, uh, the 567C 12 cylinder prime mover. Um, the cars are 10 modified GMC 40 seat inner city bus bodies that resembled what was being used on the Cena Cruiser buses designed for Greyhound. And uh, the back end of the train was said to resemble the rear of a 55 Chevy or Pontiac station wagon. Uh, you can weigh in on that with the next picture. Um, the PRR rented the first train set in February of 56. Uh, it was used on the New York to Pittsburgh run. June of 56, it was assigned to the Philadelphia to Pittsburgh run. And that's what we're seeing here in November of 56. Uh, in 57, it joined the UP city of Las Vegas. And in October of 58, both train sets were sold to the Rock Island and assigned to the Chicago Joliet Commuter Service. And Rodney has pictures of that train. Maybe we can see sometime. So there's the, there's the rear end. I'm not that familiar with the 55 uh, Chevy or Pontiac, but Make your own decision. Now from the bridge, I'm assuming that we saw in the previous uh, shots, this is a uh, eastbound. Here we got four GP9s with a eastbound freight at Ardara. And then from the ground, we got a trio of F units and another eastbound TV train. Moving a little further west to uh, Trafford. Um, and this was the uh, terminus of the commuter uh, line from Pittsburgh and the beginning of uh, eastbound uh, 0.8 grade out of the Turtle Valley for eastbound. Um, Rodney has this listed as a passenger extra. Um, Interesting, this is the same date as the RS3s that we saw at the Kiski Junction. And I, so I couldn't find any reference to what this might have been. Um, and it was not the date of an Army-Navy game or something like that that you might expect to, um, to have a big passenger extra run. But two E7s on the point. Same location, two RS3s on an eastbound freight. And um, you'll notice the RS3s were used on 
freight. They use them on passenger and commuter service. And we also see them uh, in helper service a little later. So they were versatile locomotives. Another batch of deep nines, this time five of them again on a uh, TV train at Trafford. So here we've moved to the other side of the signal bridge and we have a meet between a Jeep 30 and an F7 on a freight. Moving a little further west, we're at Pitcairn which was uh, a yard that uh, declined somewhat after uh, Conway was built uh, and upgraded in the late 50s. It did have a roundhouse and a hump yard. And here's a set of shark units. <clears throat> the B units, a 1500 horsepower shark. The first A and the subsequent B are 1600. And if you're into the minutia here, the spotting feature according to Pink Pink is a narrow sill on a 1500 versus a wide sill on a 16 and a recessed fuel filler here on the 1500 horsepower ones versus the same dent on the side frame. Uh, having said that, as I looked at these pictures and mashed up numbers with classifications, there seem to be some uh, conflicts. So things may have changed around after these guys left the factory. Same location, we got uh, E8, E8, and E7 again on a passenger train with a lot of head end traffic. Can't even see any passenger cars. And a year later, similar train, same location. Again, a lot of head end traffic. Now we have a westbound. Freighted Pitcairn with an FA2 and an F7 on the point. Uh, Rodney must have been standing next to Ken Douglas uh, here because some of Ken's pictures appear in one of Giannis's uh, diesel years books. And here's that train passing an eastbound, again powered by GP9s. This is a RS-27, yeah, I guess that would be the head-end fireman in this era, or brakeman, uh, waiting to depart uh, Pitcairn. Most people call it a DL-640. Uh, yes. We have to have multiple names, it keeps us on our toes. <laughs> Um, so Pensy had 15, 15 of these, um, and, uh, they showed up in 62. So this was only about a year afterwards. And here's, uh, here are RS3s on, uh, as helper. And this is, it looks like it's shoving the train, uh, east, um, and I, you know, I guess that's a loaded train. Uh, I can't see any coal, but I don't know if they would use an helpers on an empty coal train. It's a, it might have been coming out of uh, Shire Oaks. Pair of Fs in the U25B on a westbound at Pitcairn. There's another eastbound with an FA. One and a GP9. This is a uh, Alco C630 uh, on its maiden run, a derailed in the yard at Pitcairn, according to the caption in the Annecy book. Again, the Douglas picture, which looks exactly like, well, not exactly like Rodney's. I know they're not, the, they're not it's not Ken's, it's from a slightly different position but uh, embarrassing to derail it on its maiden run, I'm sure. Moving a little closer to Pittsburgh, uh, we're at Wilmerding uh, with three Jeep nines on our westbound. Uh, 
All right, now we're getting into Pittsburgh proper and I've got this map to help me and hopefully you out. This is the, the main line. That's the station downtown and uh, again, the Fort, and this is the Pittsburgh division at the end, that time. Then this is the uh, Fort Wayne division that comes out, goes over to Federal Street and across um, on the east side of the Ohio, whoops, excuse me, up to, um, up to Conway, uh, here at CM Tower is a branch called the Bright Side, or Brilliant Branch, uh, that connected up to the Connemaw line, uh, presumably used for commuter service, as you'll see later. Uh, we have photos from here in East Liberty. Um, from the station in Pittsburgh, uh, the Panhandle line came across uh, the Monongahela parallel the river and went out this way and on to Columbus and eventually St. Louis. Uh, this part of the line is now light rail. Uh, I'm told that the line west to Carnegie, Carnegie is gone completely. This is the Monongahela line that comes up, uh, crosses the river here and hooks up with the Fort Wayne line and goes up to Conway. So these sites that are in yellow are where we're going to see some photographs so you have some idea where they are. So this is at the CM Tower. Here's four uh, GP9s on a, again, a trailer train. <clears throat> okay, here's a shot on that uh, brilliant branch at RS3 with a couple of coaches. I was discussing this with Bob Kaplan, because he spent some time in Pittsburgh to try to figure this out. This was a midweek shot, so it was not likely it was a passenger excursion for rail fans. So I'm assuming this was a regular commuter run. Um, at East Liberty, the signal bridge with an SW1 and uh, tank cars. So the sharks with a westbound. Now we're at the East Liberty Station, um, an RS3 with a commuter run um, in March of 1962. A year later, the weather looked a little nicer. The same location. Anybody from Pittsburgh identify that building there? Does that give us a landmark? Looks like Rodney walked down the tracks in the station. We have a eastbound passenger train in December of uh, 62. We're about four and a half miles uh, out of downtown Pittsburgh here. Um, I tried to figure out what this train might be looking at the timetables. Um, and there was uh, an eastbound, the Duquesne, leaving Pittsburgh at two in the afternoon, but uh, I can't be sure that that's what this train is. Rodney did not uh, indicate the symbol. Um, there's a freight with the sea liner. Um, on the, on the rear of the power set, heading east. Looks like we have somebody riding along up here in the cab. Here we have three Jeep nines on a freight, also at East Liberty. Another passenger train, looks like we've got a little problem with the uh, steam generator with a leak maybe, or is it cold enough that just the steam condenses and then we've got some ice formation. I hope the passengers aren't cold. Another eastbound to same location. Moving a little further west from there, um, set of sharks. 
these are all the 1500 horsepower version according to the numbers but if you look at this, you know, that recess fuel filler spotting feature doesn't match the number. So I don't have an explanation for that. Looks like the same trench here. This looks like a helper move. We got a caboose up here with uh, three GP30s. Uh, and I think that's probably a 35 or a 40. It's hard to say. And two cabooses. Anybody know the Operation Pittsburgh, why they need a helper on a train in this location? I don't know if there are grades going into the station there. There's a grade coming out of the station. Yeah? Yeah, because you're in the, you're in the Allegheny River Valley and you got to yeah. get out of the valley. And yeah. well, that's, what, that's one of the reasons why the Connemaw line was built. Okay, so this could be, this could be a train coming out of the station heading East. East. All right. <clears throat> I'm trying to look at the sun angle and figure that out. But that makes more sense because I couldn't, you know, yeah. So this might very well be an eastbound coming out of the, the valley. Okay. <clears throat> uh, also at East Liberty, an F unit, a GP9, and a GP9B, of which the PR had, I think, 40 of them. The last unit is tabless. All right, now this this is uh, leaving the 4th Street Station, according to Rodney. I was able to find this on Google Earth. That building is still there. This is the line that goes from the station, crosses the Monongahela River, and then takes a sharp turn, follows the river, which turns into the Ohio and was part of the Panhandle line, uh, which and it's now light rail. And there's a switch engine in this pretty much the same location. A little further uh, on that same line, we crossed the, the Monongahela up here. And this is the El Rama local, which has crossed the Monongahela and we'll be heading down towards uh, uh, Brownsville Junction. I'm not sure how far they went. Uh, you could have some fun with these cars. Bill posted this picture on uh, on Facebook, and we had a lot of fun talking about these mid fifties uh, automobiles down there. A little further along, in the same line, um, this train's going under the highway bridge that you saw to the right of the train in the previous picture. Three G thirties uh, on the Mon Mon line. And this is a passenger train at Brownsville. And I'm guessing this was an excursion. Um, train given, you know, two e units and this long train. And I, any, can anybody identify this car? Does that look familiar to anybody? Um, but again, I scoured around the resources I had to see if there was something going on with a passenger excursion then, but I was not able to identify it. Now we're back in Pittsburgh and there's the bridge we saw with the El Ramo local. This is um, Manan Tower. Uh, this is a train turning to go down on the Panhandle line, presumably to Cincinnati or St. Louis uh, with an E8, an E7B and an E7. Continuing a little further west, uh, this is uh, I believe in eastbound here you can see one of the funiculars. So this is the uh, Monongahela River over here. Uh, looks like a hopper train. Looks empty, so I'm guessing it was going to Shire Oaks for loading. That's the PNLA station to the right of the engine. Right here? Yep. Yep, yeah. Which was then used by the B and O, wasn't it? At yes. Point, yes. Yes. For the long distance passenger trains, the yes, commuter yeah. trains were on the other side of the river. Of the river, yeah. And he's even got a streetcar in there. Yeah, yeah, right there. I didn't notice that. Good pickup. Good yeah, pickup. that's the Smithfield Street Bridge. Right. Um, 
I want to go back to you. So what's the Smithfield Street Bridge? Where he, the, where the train is? No, where the streetcar is. Oh, okay, okay. It's a very rare lenticular truss bridge. Yeah. Now this is at Smithfield Street Station, and there's a funicular, which I think we saw on the previous photo. Um, and I believe the mine line is up here on another level. We see some shots up there. Uh, this is presumably one of the commuter trains with an RS3. Jim? Yeah? The, the bridge in the background is a highway bridge. It's the Liberty yeah. Bridge. Yeah, yeah, that's a highway bridge. The railroad bridge is a little lower and right. down here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the Jeep 30s were going under this highway bridge. Right. Okay, now I guess, you, you know, walk a little and turn around, and uh, now we're looking at uh, a freight on uh, the Mon line uh, that's uh, heading east um, with a couple of FAs. And now we've got one uh, heading west. Um, hopper train, and again, you know, I can't see cold in there, but given the direction it's going, I would think that that's coal coming out of Shire Oaks. I don't know why an empty train would be going in this direction. It just doesn't appear to go above the hopper cars. All right, now we're back on the main line. We've crossed uh, the Allegheny River. We're up at uh, Federal Street, and this is where the Connemaw line diverges to, to go back the other way from where the train is. Uh, Long distance passenger train, a lot of head end power. Uh, E8, E7, and E8 on the point. Federal Street Tower right there. Great train from the same location. Uh, two 1600 horsepower uh, sharks, an A and a B on the point. All right, we're moving further west. We are in Jack's Run. And it is Saturday, September 29th, 1962. And I would propose if anybody invents a time machine, this is the place and this is the time to go when you see this series of photos that Rodney got here. <clears throat> um, two E units uh, eastbound, and uh, I'm assuming this is a passenger train, but you know. Anybody want to weigh in? And we've got some head end cars here, and I think those are passenger cars there, and I think that's the freight from another track because I don't know why they would be having E units on a freight train. I don't think the Pensy did that. We're not on the Erie Lackawanna. Um, TP 9s and one F3, an eastbound freight. Looking the other way, we have. FM Erie built in a B on a westbound. Maybe waiting for a signal given the crew hanging out the cab. Back to back A sharks on another freight. Now we've got an eastbound. Pensy did paint uh, some of their sharks with the five stripes and use them for a brief period of time on passenger service. That's what we're seeing here. An A DBA set of F units. This one, the second unit being an F3, the others F7s. Another ABB set of F units. All right, we're moving a little further west. This is uh, at Glenfield, PA. Um, a pair of GP 30s. An FA. An FAB at Glenfield. This is also at Glenfield, and this is still lettered Pennsylvania, but 
wasn't it? May 1st, 1968, the coming of Penn Central. So uh, this is actually a former PRR unit on a very short passenger train. And another uh, pair of PRR units numbered in the Penn Central scheme also at Glenfield on the same day. C-424 and U-25B at Glenfield. These were the two competitors to the uh, GP-30 when uh, Pensy started buying a higher horsepower second generation locomotives. Now we're at Glenfield again with an ABA. I think this is a 55 Oldsmobile over here. I don't know if Rodney upgraded by then. This is January of 1964. A pair of sharks at Glenfield on a westbound freight. We're at Leedsdale, which is just south of Conway. Well, south is actually railroad east of Conway, so I'm thinking these two alignment transfer units are doing some switching in the yard. This is uh, the roundhouse uh, at Conway that was only built in the late uh, 50s. Those are two AS, as I think, front. This is the westbound classification yard, according to the caption on Rodney's slide at Conway. And a freight uh, west of Conway with a pair of Jeep 35s and All right, we're gonna move into Ohio and get a little map for reference. Um, this is the Panhandle to Columbus, Cincinnati, on to St. Louis. We're going to see some activity there. The uh, Youngstown branch, he's got a shot on this line. This is the Cleveland line. It goes through the lines where it crosses to Cleveland. This is the Fort Wayne line. It goes to Chicago. And this line here from Hudson down to Orville. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was referred to as the Akron Secondary. But uh, chime in with some information, especially our expert from the Cleveland area. So here we are at Mingo Junction with uh, the transfer unit. It's one of my favorite shots of Rodney's. Two of them obviously working, some sanding going on. So it's moving a heavy cut of cars. Heading west, we're at Denison, Ohio, with a pair of SD40s. Um, this line is now uh, the Ohio Central as far as Columbus, currently under Genesee and Wyoming ownership. One of the newest additions to the PRR roster, a pair of SD45s. We're only a couple years old when this photo was taken. We're also with Denison. Here's a C628 and SD45 and another C628. Also with Denison, a U30C, a U25. B, another use 30C in Penn Central paint, and a Jeep 30. Eriksville, Ohio, uh, a pair of Jeep 35s and a pair of Jeep 30s. By now, I guess the PR had done away with the train line antennas on the freight units.
Urgeville again. This is uh, train number 13, which was the Mail and Express out of Pittsburgh to St. Louis, leaving Pittsburgh at 1245 in the afternoon. That same train and a little chillier weather in February of 1967. E8 and E7B and another E8. This is at Warwick. Um, two C425s and a U25B. Okay, this is between uh, Akron and Orville. Warwick is where the uh, B it's where this line joins the B&O into Ak through Akron. To Akron? Yeah, it was uh, operated as a double track railroad jointly. One track was ah, owned by B&O okay. and one track was owned by Pensy. I thought Warwick was on, on um, what is now the Ohio Central. Okay. No, uh, Warwick has always been a Pensy or B&O point. Okay, good. Thanks for that. Because uh, there's a bunch of shots here. Uh, it's actually, the tower was actually a Pensy Tower. Ah, okay. Okay. Here's a few more shots from the same general area. U30C. These are Jeep 9s behind it. One Cabalus. March of 67. SD40 leading a grossly overpowered train there. I can see one boxcar and something else behind it on the rear end. Also a Warwick. We got uh, now we're at Columbus, Ohio with an H10 shoving on the rear of a what looks to be an empty hopper train switching in the yard. All right. This was a little off the beaten track. This is uh, north of uh, that line we just looked at. This is uh, Fairbanks Warrens H2044 in Dover, Ohio. Now we're on the Fort Wayne line in Canton. Another set of uh, units with uh, PC numbers because it's after the merger. This is train number 55, the Pennsylvania Limited, New York to Chicago, going through Canton. Departed New York at 10 o'clock, arrived at Canton at 9.37 in the morning. Arrived Chicago the following afternoon at 3 o'clock. Same train on a different day in Lima, Ohio. Way in on this one, a passenger train in Tiffin, Ohio in April of 1966. Certainly not something I expect to see as a through train, but no further information on the slide as to what that might have been. Also at Tiffin, we've got uh, an ABA set on a freight. All right, that's it for the Fort Wayne line. Rodney had one shot on the Youngstown line. This is a hopper train at Girard, Ohio, with an SD40 and an SD45 going under a coaling tower. And this is at Wellsville, Ohio. Really nice AB shark set. These are the 1500 horsepower version. I think we're now on the Cleveland line, are we not? This is at Brady Lake with a slab train, U30C. Another. Brady Lake is just east of Kent. Yeah. Yeah. Rodney had the slide labeled Brady, and Bill and I did a little reconnoitering and decided it had to be Brady Lake. So this is U thirty C R S twenty seven, another U thirty C and a GP thirty. 
Do you guys from, all, from guy from Akron know if that's the connection that used to go from the Pensy C and P line to the Erie on the background? Uh, it went to a New York Central branch. Yeah. Okay. I think the. I think I don't think that is the Erie in the back. No, we, this view is looking to the east. That's the tower down below the. This is actually a jointly owned Pensy New York Central line that mm -hmm. went to Cleveland. And the um, track in the background is gaining altitude to yeah. go over, over the top of the Pensy. Yeah. Is that a tower that the bridge or is that, I see that, or is that a railroad bridge over top of that where the Erie would have crossed? Yes, that's where the Erie crossed um, down CMP. by that tower. Okay. That, that is the Erie over top. Okay. Yes. This is wow. the Erie up here? Yes. And that's yes. New York Central. Okay. Yeah, the tower is to the left. Presumably this train's coming out of Pittsburgh with all the steel back in that day. Going to Cleveland? Yes, this was a jointly owned line that went from here to Cleveland, uh, jointly owned by the New York Central and the Pensy. Although it was rarely used by the Pensy, it was primarily used by the New York Central, and they would get on the Pensy and then go to uh, Youngstown. This is at Ravenna, Ohio, uh, where the uh, Fairbanks Morris Sea Liner and three F units. And this looks like a coil steel train. Some guns back here. I mean, I, I'm guessing the whole train was steel. Maybe the same kind of run as uh, what we saw. Is this the same line as the previous picture? Anybody know that? Yeah, you're a little yeah. further south. Yeah, yeah, but it's the same, uh, the same line. Okay. And it's the CMP. We have a rail, yeah. We have a we have a rail train over here. I mean, Pittsburgh, you uh, Cleveland guys are gonna come in handy as we get into a couple of shots in downtown Cleveland. I'm gonna probe you for some details. Okay. See, we're also at Ravenna. Um, the interesting concepts. Now, you know, we got a caboose back here, but looking at the snow, this train is obviously going from left to right. These guys are not pushing it that way. Um, and these look like B&O CPLs. <laughs> it looks like this train is on the B&O. Yeah. And the um, Pensy <clears throat> would have taken the B&O to uh, the Youngstown area. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, there was there, there was a connection at Rave Tower that went down from the C and P to the B and O in Ravenna. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, my sister lived there in 1980, yeah. and I saw one coal train go through yeah. there. Jim, that um, I'll pick that that single track up on the hillside there in that picture with the um, uh, GE leading. That was yeah. the former uh, Lake Erie in Pittsburgh. Ah, okay. You're talking about the, uh, that shot there. Yeah, that shot yeah. there, that, that single track up top is the Lake yeah. Erie in Pittsburgh. Yeah. It was a- it Yeah, was it's a, right there, but, but this was also- New York um, Central. Yeah, this was also part of the Lake Erie in Pittsburgh. Yeah. They had, they both, they came together yeah. down here and this track is gaining altitude yeah. to go over the top yeah. of the Pensy behind the photographer. Okay. This, yeah, was, correct, correct. this was probably taken from Lake Rockwell Road. That's correct. Yeah, if you could, if yep. you look at Google Earth, you could see a road over the tracks here. And there was a signal bridge down yeah. here. Okay. All right, now we're at Hudson, Ohio. And I don't know if this is on the line from Alliance up to Cleveland, or is this where doesn't the Akron secondary the line does Akron branch off here? Uh, correct. Well, the Akron's uh, the Akron branch, as it originally was called, would uh, join this the Cleveland line here. That okay. was the very first 
railroad that went through Akron was the Akron branch. And they had a Y. Um, the station is in the middle, if I remember correctly, is in the middle of a Y. Okay. That's correct. For the Akron branch. So what direction is this train uh, traveling? Is it... Headed towards Cleveland. Towards Cleveland. Okay. Uh, all right. I have a convention of SD40s in Cleveland here in May of 65. This is a Republic Steel. Pardon, which steel? That sign looks like it says Republic Steel. Oh, if Republic you... Steel, okay. Make some notes here in these. All right. Now, this is the only picture in Rodney's collection I've seen where sharks are hooked up to EMDs, and I think I see a hand hanging out the window. So I'm guessing this has got a crew in it. He said it's got a crew in it. Um, that is Bridge One over the Cuyahoga, over the mouth of the Cuyahoga River. Okay, that's the question I wanted to ask. Uh, bridge one. Um, now, bridge one from Lake Erie? Yes. Okay. That's that's the mouth of the Cuyahoga River, essentially. Now, Lake Erie is off to the right of this train. Okay. Okay, I know where that one is. This, is, this, like route, is, this route is currently used by Amtrak. Yeah, okay. Um, this is the Chicago Main Line. Yeah. Now we have a similar looking bridge, but it's obviously not in the same location. That's Terminal Tower over here, is it not? Yes. And I'm, I was looking at Google Earth, and I'm thinking that this bridge might not be there anymore. Can anybody confirm where it's when that is? It looks like this is like on the Whiskey Island Loop. Does that sound, look right to you, Craig? Yes, that's what it looks like to me. Okay, okay. Whiskey Island. And that is Terminal Tower off yeah. to the right. And it looks like there's a highway, at least now there's a highway right next to this bridge. Is that? Uh... Well, the shoreway would have been there in 1965, wouldn't it? I'm pretty sure it would have been, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. Well, it's interesting to look at these pictures and try to figure out exactly uh, where they were taken. So I appreciate the input. Um, now we're, I guess, back at that first bridge again. Yeah. With a, with a light power move. This is, a, this is the New York Central Main Line he's on. Okay. Oh. Yeah, now, now you're in my backyard. Now we're in Akron. Yeah, we have, a, we have about uh, eight Can more. you go, go back to the other picture for that a one? second? Okay, if this is on the east side of the bridge, which um, which I think it might yeah. be, then the at this point to the left is where the Pensy would come in, and then the the water level line New York Central would have come in is on the other side. Right. Those tracks are still there. Yeah. In fact, um, in the Conrail days. They were both very busy because this is where traffic would often split, either go to Pittsburgh yeah. or go to Buffalo. Yeah. And um, but now, uh, since the Conrail breakup, the uh, second main that went to Buffalo through downtown Cleveland yeah. east of the bridge has been taken out, and and uh, there is one track still there that Amtrak uses. Both the Lakeshore and the Capital yeah. Limited use that track. Yeah. But thanks. Okay, so we've got about eight more shots to go, and then we're done. And okay. they're all in Akron, so. <laughs> this this is between South Street and Boris Street. Yeah. And the track in the foreground is actually the Pensy track. That train is actually on the eastbound B&O Main Line. Yeah. Okay. And the far tracks are the are the Erie Mains and the beginning of the McCoy Street Yard. And the bridge in the background is yep. Interstate 76. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. 
Now we're at a gray crossing in Akron, and he's got a couple of shots here. This one's kind of nice with the snow. Looks like um, might be Arlington Street. Well, Arlington is. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not sure if that's Arlington Street or not. Well, the next Arlington might... Street is where the Pensy would separate from the B and O. Right. Just before they got into the B and O yard. Yeah. Well, this, this looks like it's the same location. Oh. Without the snow, it's a little easier. You to know, could, could this be like around South Akron Yard? Yeah, I'll bet that is. That's yeah. probably down at South Akron. which was the Pensy's yard yeah. in Akron. Yeah. All right, and here we are in the uh, Conrail, or I'm sorry, the Penn Central era with uh, the RS-27 still in the PRR scheme. Ooh. This is uh, also Penn Central era. Now we have a New York Central SD-40 Tucked in second. Um, I'm not sure. That's what, a deep 40. I'm not sure what bridge that is in the background. It I think this might be south of uh, I 76. What's the next street that goes over the uh, joint lines after I 76? Well, Main Street does, but there's another bridge, and I can't think of the name of it right before Main Street. Is that what you're thinking of? Because this looks like it might be around might where be. Saltfield Publishing was. Yeah. And and the foreground is the Erie, right? This would be heading west, I think. Well, the Erie, yeah, uh, the Erie would be over on the right. On the right, okay. If, if this is, well, wait a minute. If this is heading west, the Erie would be in the foreground. Yeah, that's okay, yes. Yeah, right. right. Okay. okay. And Bob, you said that's a Jeep 40 second, not an SD40, right? I believe that's the case. I don't I, think I, New York I, Central had any SD40. Okay. Well, I think you're. I think you're right. I think you're right. Looking yeah. at that closely. 3042 is a Jeep 40. Okay. All right. Again, we're back at uh, Forest okay. Street. Yeah. In May of '65 with. Three SD-35s, and we're just about done. Here we are again in Akron, slightly different location. Is that uh, that pedestrian bridge uh, by uh, Waterloo Road? Yeah, uh, yeah man, just Manchester Road is, is yeah. off in the background to behind the footbridge. That's the old Waterloo Road footbridge, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. You're, so you're in Kenmore. And then that's a, a B and o signal. Out of the South Akron yard on the... On the uh, the Pensy track that ran down to Lambert and rejoined the uh, the B&O at Lambert. I might mention we were talking about that joint line between Akron and Warwick, that it was um, one track owned by the Pensy, one track by the B&O. They operated on Pensy rules, but they had B&O signals. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, um, we're just about done here. Um, Akron Junction, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is where the Hudson line came into the into the B and O at Arlington Street. Yeah, that track going to the right is a B and O. Right. Okay. And this looks nothing. It's all been straight lined and. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, Arlington Street is behind the photographer. Right. And okay. Behind and to the left. And if you ever see a picture of a tower uh, for Akron Junction, it would be like to the behind and to the right. All right, good. And then our final shot in Akron looks like same location. So that's yeah. a B&O. The B&O uh, line is uh, over here. And then the Erie's beyond that. Okay. All right. And that is it, gentlemen. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Bravo. Yes. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs>